Well, good morning, good evening. Hopefully the arrow of time keeps flowing in the direction it needs to flow in. Welcome to Waveform Orchard, my video channel where I've been documenting a community studio build-out for KTQA LP 95.3 FM here in Tacoma. I'm Sam, I've been doing the build-out and a whole bunch of other stuff. And despite some obvious uh, changes to the studio recently, we're actually not talking about that today. We are talking about another station entirely, who we've picked up as sort of a partner in technology, I suppose. KQWZLP, 106.5 FM, One America Voice, out of SeaTac, Washington, recently required my assistance in some of their stuff. Now, their RF side was great. It was working just fine. Uh, I actually looked at it six months ago. Um, they invited me to come take a look at it, and it functions very well. But they needed some help on the IT side and on the audio delivery side. And on that side, it was basically going to be a build out from the ground up. Now, that's what we did. And that was basically this week for me. It was specifically a time critical build out, which means my usual methodology for building stuff, which is trolling eBay and Amazon and and my usual contacts to get decent hardware was basically off the table. Uh, I had to do it very quickly, either with local recyclers, uh, stuff from stores, or stock I had on hand. And we succeeded. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is the server we're going to be using. It is old. It is a Dell PowerEdge 510. Uh, I got it for slightly more than pocket change, but only slightly more than pocket change. One of the problems with these servers, I mean, it came with Windows 10. Don't know what the hell I'm going to do with that. Uh, one of the problems with these servers, though, is that the RAID card doesn't work with SSDs particularly well. And in the field, if I can avoid, um, if I like, if I can avoid spitting rust, basically the less moving parts, the better. I this I've had every time I've launched a radio station in a weird with a transmitter in a weird location with with spinning hard drives, it just ends up going bad. And I end up replacing it with SSDs inside of two years. Um, so we're gonna put SSDs in here. <clears throat> Motherboard on these things have onboard SANA, but there's one problem. I don't know where to get power for the SSD, so I'm going to have to kind of futz my own SATA power connector using parts I've got lying around. And All right, so here's the inside of it. I should probably unplug it so I don't break something. That's been known to happen on this channel. Um, let's remove the... So on servers, if you don't know, instead of CPU fans, it's basically a big bank of fans and it just ducks airflow from the front out the back and then through ducts like this. So... <clears throat> Room for two CPUs has one. Um, it's a Xeon. I need a soda. What? Look over there. Thanks. Okay. So, this is the RAID card here. Um, and this is a battery to support the backup of the configuration of the RAID card. This thing's only getting one drive. So the RAID, I mean, just for a number of reasons, is completely superfluous. And I am of the opinion that if it doesn't need to be in there, best not. Spoots out. So if you want to come in close here. So those guys right there are SATA connections uh, that we're going to be using. One of them is already in use for the, for the optical drive. But it uses a mini connector. I could pour, I could, if I wanted to, uh, 
Assuming the SSD is only using 5 volt power, I could pull 5 volt power from one of the USB ports, but I don't. <laughs> Can I just say that bothers me a little bit? <laughs> the other side of that, that though, I'm going to put the RAID card back in at least temporarily. And there's nothing special about this RAID card. It's just a funny mount for a four-way PCIe card. PCI Express, for those of you playing at home. I mean, the easiest thing to do would be to tap, tap that. But we're going to have to get just a little dangerous. Well, I want to make sure that the power I'm looking for is there. So I'll plug it back in. One. That way I don't die if things get stupid. Just so I don't need to deal with the power, the operating system, and yank out the drive. But I'll power it up. We'll go to voltage. Yes. Always treat your leads with respect. All right, so let's power it up. Okay, so on this connector, it's gonna be loud. Sorry, actually. Fans always kick to top notch when this thing is unplugged. So we have this connector here. And on the top, it's all black wires. That suggests ground. Well, here, can we yank this out? This looks a lot like a connector that used to be found on a, is that a Power Mac G5? Okay, so we've got these red connectors, these yellow, or these red wires, these yellow wires, and these black wires. Using the standard ketchup mustard nomenclature of PCs, that means these black ones are ground, these yellow ones are 13 volt, 12 volt, and uh, the red ones are 5 volt. I want to test that though in operation, in situ. So, plug it in. Let's turn it on. Really? There we go. Hello, welcome to Jet Propulsion Laboratories. All right, so I'm gonna test the five volt rail. So look here. Quiet it down. Okay, that's definitely five. That's still five. All right, I'm gonna test the 12 volt rail. Yeah, that's 12 volts. There you go. All right, so we found all the voltages we need. <sighs> this modification will void your warranty. Uh, I'll just put that out there. The smartest thing to do would be to probably disconnect that cable and splice on the cable itself. The dumb thing to do would be to tap the 
tap the back plane directly. But tapping the back plane seems like a lot more fun. So I think I'm going to tap the back plane. <laughs> so this connector. Would this be appropriate to say what is tapping the back plane? Oh, you'll see what I mean in a moment. I mean, it sounds euphemistic to me. Everything's a euphemism. If you use it right. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to unplug all the things. And then this should pull right out because nothing's plugged into it. Yo ho ho, backplane. So, here you have all the uh, SAS sockets. And if you say, Sam, that looks an awful lot like SATA connectors, that's because you're paying attention. That's precisely what they are. Um, so you've got six SAS, uh, nope, that's eight because it's four by two, four times two is eight, not six. I don't know what base it would be to be six. Um, but here's the power connector. So I could get this to get ground. I could get this to get five volts and I could hit that to get 13 volts. And that's everything I need for a Molex connector. That, that would be one way. The other way would be, again, cut one of these wires, splice in, and get ground from here. Splice in, get 12 volts from here. Splice in, get five volts from here. Now I have to think. This looks um, like it might be soldered directly to the, to the PDU, the power distribution board, because these are all soldered directly in, in which case uh, I don't want to pull that out. So it is actually, it might be safer to tap the back, the back plane. I don't know, Becky, what are you thinking? Um, why would splicing into the wires over there require soldering? Oh, duh, because you gotta Cause I, meet them together. Yeah, because I gotta, um, I don't think this cable comes out without the PDU coming out, which would be a bigger deal. So, splice it into the panel, just like you said, that would be more fun. And it also comes out comes out a lot easier. This does come out. See I'll tell you what, let's completely remove the, the raid card. So back up a little bit. Won't be needing one way or another. I mean, really? These guys always want to come out until they don't. But the connector on the other side might be a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. So this is the rag card. Don't need that. This is the... Is that a fan? No. no. So this backs up. This is a 3.7, 7 watt hour Theoretically, lithium ion battery, maybe? That doesn't, see. yeah, lithium ion. I could reuse this. Holds, that does, backs up the configuration of the RAID card because they need configuration. And then these cables come out. This is a SAS, fairly standard SAS connector. Serial attached SCSI, because that's what 
it all really is. Here's the other one. Oh god, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh. We see now. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's soldered directly to the board. <clears throat> These little yellow? Yeah, this guy. Ones. Oh. <sighs> right down in there. And down in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that renders this one unsafe to fool with. This would require unscrewing and would be a modification of something a lot more central to the operation of the server. This is not central to the operation of the server. Do that one. Yeah. This seems least destructive. All right, let's do that. You want to get to the dangerous part? Yes. All right. Well, first things first, I got to plug the... It's not a standard AT... It looks like an ATX connector, but it is not, in fact, an ATX connector. It's a little bigger. And I thought this thing was like a weird wiring loom, but it seems like it's a handle. And so it made it way easier to unplug than I was thinking originally, which is pretty cool. All right. The dangerous bit. Now with a wire hanging off of it. Ominously. Wait, should I be like handling a non conductive stick with which to interrupt some kind of flow of electrical stuff? If we get AC off of this, I screwed up way bigger than like check the simulation settings because something's really amiss. Uh There's not a lot in the world that can do that to you these days, hun. Oh, I called you hun on the camera. Aww. I'm glad you found it cute and not, like, patronizing. <laughs> no. But you know what is patronizing? Your Patreon! Yeah, I saw this. This connector. And I thought, oh, I'm in luck! It's already got a SATA power connector right there. And then here, you might want to get in close on that one. And you turn it over and... Oh, it's mini SATA. And I have no adapters. Life sucks. Okay, it looks like it's everything. All right. SATA drive. I thought I brought a cable here so that we wouldn't have to go looking for it on Does the... Does this sit on the ground? I... That SATA cable? Yes. Yes, it is. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Nothing left to do but plug in and turn it on. Shit! Hey, Becky. Yes. It's not gonna work. Oh. Oh, I didn't, dear. I didn't the monitor. I didn't actually plug it in. Like, the modified part doesn't have power. God, shut up! Yeah, I didn't actually plug it in, because I'm a doofus. Now it's dangerous. All right. All right. During these moments, ears open for buzzing noises, Nose open for burning things, and eyes open for sparks and or fires. All right, my camera work's going to be a little less uh, 
still in that case, and so no, I'm going to be joining I, I'm, in. This is advice to, to everyone. I'm going to be doing that. You can focus on the camera. That's fine. Let me plug in an Arch Linux installer. Although it might boot. Well, that's a good sign. That's also a good sign. Well, it's complaining that uh, it has no raid, which is new. I suppose, I imagine there might be a bio setting, but I'm not smelling anything. Any informative information? So far, no. Is it doing what you expected? Kinda. Okay, uh, dev SDA right here, dev one, two, and three. That is that is the flash drive. Let's mount SDA two somewhere we can see it. Uh, and if this is the machine that I think it is, it'll be Melon. That was what this machine used to be called. Yep. Melon. The problem is it reports the lack of a missing uh, backplane. So maybe it... Let's unplug you. Because that's the only other connector. And let's see what happens. In fact, why don't we fake it a little bit? Would you hold this button down? Actually, why don't I hold that button down? That makes more sense. That is the case intrusion button. This is uh, temperate. I'm looking for a. All right, where's the SAS plug? I can't find it anywhere. Servers take a long time to boot. Is the front of the computer blue? A uh, green. It's a green power button. No, the LCD panel. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, it is. It says blue. It's... Yeah, okay. It doesn't appear to be complaining about uh, no backplane connections, meaning that that other connector that I unplugged was some sort of communications channel between the backplane and, uh, and the server. And the lack of... Um, What? I'm gonna hit F1. No. 
Why are you... So what are we trying? I'm trying to figure out why uh, it needed me to press F1 on boot. Because that suggests an error condition, but it didn't report an error condition. So, I don't know what's going on there. That might require some tweaking. I well, didn't ask for anything that time. I'm going to call this a success, I think. Now I just need to figure out how to mount it in there. Cable management in tight spaces is always a pain in the butt. And I want to do mods to an iPod. Have you mentioned that on this channel? Not at all. Look, that's enough slack that I think I can just mount the drive in here and then label it, you know, warning, stupid. Why would it be stupid? Just because it's mounted weirdly? Well, because <clears throat> huge, normally, huge bay and huge normally you have a drive like this, and then the connector is, it goes, well, here. Huh. Tape! Do they all have tape in them? They can't all have tape in them. They all have tape in them! <laughs> Oh my god, it's a screw fiesta! This one doesn't. This one do. This one do, but it's got a ton of screws in it. Ah, that's what you meant by screw fiesta. What do you mean? Well, you said it's a screw fiesta, and I hadn't seen that there were screws stuck in the tape. Yeah. So I could only surmise what you meant. All right, well, we found screws. So if you look here, so we put the drive in the drive bay, and if you look there, it connects against the back plane and then makes a connection. So once you slam the drive in the bay and you latch it, it's connected. And then you press the button and you pull it out and it's disconnected. In this case, which I can't show you because that's an SAS drive, so I plug these connectors in and I go meep, meep. See, that's sh shitty. That's bad. So label it stupid on the bay. So I'm going to label, so I'm going to label it warning not connected to backplane on it. And then, yeah. Wait, are you going to label it, or do I get to keep using the label maker? Do you want to use the label maker? I am loving using the label maker, especially when I can make it drop shadow, add bubble lettering, and italicized. Which seems to be fitting for the warning, stupid. Don't do that. Okay. Like, actual people with jobs might have to deal with this. Okay, so normal Helvetica, then. Please. Okay. If you want a serif font, I suppose that's okay. That's about as far as I go. So while we're wrapping this up, I imagine a lot of you people, uh, a lot of you people, I imagine a lot of people are asking, like, why I'm bothering to go this, this, um, go this route. Well, the older perk cards that are, that are in here, which use the, the Mega Raid driver in Linux, I, I think they're rebranded Adaptech cards. Uh, the Raid cards of this vintage don't really understand SSDs. Uh, some of the parts in here, the dates are stamped 2009. This server, I think, is supposed to be a little bit newer than that, but not much newer. Given how little I paid for this server, I, I'm not really that concerned, and it's not going into a heavy-duty environment. But I want it to be as stable as possible. So, you know, upgrading it to be uh, as, as nice as it can be. So... Um, I had a ser server similar to this in a, in a different environment. I had mechanical drives. The mechanical drives failed. I replaced them with SSDs. And the onboard monitoring system kept complaining that it couldn't figure out the rotational speed of, a, of the SSD. 
which um, makes sense because SSDs don't have a rotational speed and only some very early SSDs I've heard of reported a false rotational speed. And that makes this L LED display up for LCD display up front go from blue to red and blink at me and it constantly reports it's off now so yeah, there's nothing to look at yeah um constantly report errors um and it just annoyed the crap out of me so when it came time to do the update to to update that machine i pulled out the ssd i pulled out all the mechanical drives I pulled out the RAID card, as I did here, and in that case, what I did was I bought an NVMe drive, bought a uh, 4 by PCI 4 to NVMe adapter, and just put the card on that, slapped it in there, and then booted off a USB. And that worked great, uh, and continues to work great. Um, I don't have time to wait for that card to come in, so I needed to be adaptable, and I really don't want to show up at the job site on Monday with a computer that's throwing a major error and saying, oh, don't worry about that error. Um, now, granted, the people I'm working with are going to see this video. That's not a question. So they get to see the really crazy stuff that I did to this. Would I do this on a professional job site? Absolutely not. Do I recommend that you do this? Absolutely not. Um, I've already nearly killed myself once. Uh, I don't... Uh, uh, you know. Not on this one. No, but on this channel. And I have the cool Franken scar, uh, Frankenstein scar leading directly to my nether regions to prove it. Um, but does it do the job? Yes. Yes, it does. So what I have done to mount this is I had a three and a half to two and a half adapter uh, lying around. I mounted the SSD on it upside down, and then I screwed it into the dock. Now, if you come around over here, I will plug in the things, and then I will back the cables out a little bit. That empty uh that clear string tube mm -hmm. it's gonna throw me for a loop someday i'm gonna open it up like did i not cover the solder soldering work i did oh my god i'm i'm evil <sighs> gotta admit it uh threw me a little bit too <laughs> i said yeah wait a minute did you leave bare solder <laughs> joints open that's the word i was looking for thank you now that's in the final modification I'm going to add, it's a USB 3 add-on card so that I can quickly copy information to and from this machine. Um, I don't, I'm not planning on charging off the USB 3 port, so I don't need the Molex connector on the back. This is a thing I have tested in the past. Welcome to Blow Dryer Testing Laboratories. My name is Sam. Today we're testing a 1500 watt blow dryer. And a water tank. Well, I think I found the first legitimate problem with this, why it might have been junked. One of the Ethernet interfaces might be bad. Dev SDB, $476.94. All right. Well, I'll call it a night. Well, at this point, we had to shift gears entirely because we got a social media message saying that bookshelves had come available locally, free for the taking from the local Pythian temple, which sounds pretty groovy. So Becky and I hopped in the fit, drove down the hill, and jammed as many shelves as that teeny tiny car would take, and then we drove them back up in shifts, and the back of the car kept flopping up as we were going up the hill, and people were honking at us, and I felt weird, and yeah, but... Long story short, we have shelves now, and I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been kind of a storage crunch in the studio the last few weeks as we keep installing stuff, and there are boxes and things that have yet to be installed, and there isn't enough places to put things. So that's solved, at least temporarily. And now, I have a bit of a confession. I was hoping to take this opportunity to show off a little bit of what it looks like on the software side, 
for uh, for a radio station like this one. I was specifically going to show off uh, some packages that I've been working on. But the thing is, it's a lot of work. I mean, this was a build out of a radio station from the ground up, at least from the beep boop side. So there was a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of stuff. There was operating system installs, there was routing, there was Wi-Fi, uh, networking, virtual machines, whatever you want to call it. I was going to use this as an opportunity to show you a project I'd been working on called System Jack, which is a scaffold around System D and some pre-existing Linux audio components so that they would run out of boot, automatically configure, self-heal, and like be centrally configured so that you'd have simple configuration and operation while still holding on to that one tool does one job idea I have for, for operation. But the combined video, uh, all told, would have outpaced the amount of content I've done for Waveform Orchard at least two times. So that's going to have to wait for another time when I'm not in the middle of building a community radio station. Maybe when that's all said and done, I'll do a series of videos on how that works. But for now, um, yeah, this is basically what it looked like. Now, at this point, software is configured, hardware got, everything seems to work. It was time to go to the transmitter site and get this stuff installed. Now, a little bit of a, a audio alert here. This was a boiler room suitable for a cheap 80s action film. Operational, lots of noises, things happening. So I guess this is a bit of a, of a headphone check, because I did what I could with the audio, but there's still stuff going on. Day of, uh, we're uh, on our way to the transmitter site. Um, it's raining. A location that, given general security measures, we cannot uh, disclose. In fact, I don't even have permission to tell you what radio station I'm on at this point. I need to get that. That's one of the things I'm hoping to get uh, today so that I can share who I'm working with. So yeah, I-5 North, it's uh, rainy and crappy. Fortunately, I'm not expecting any antenna work today, so that doesn't matter, except for getting all the crap in, in there if you want to do a shot of behind me. I always hate morning of a window. Um, I feel like ass. Uh, how you doing, Becky? Been on Zoom for four and a half hours already today. Yeah. Um, it's raining and it's crap. Oh yeah. So the adventures of this week, uh, this vehicle picked up a name. Becky, would you like to present it to the world? <laughs> we are driving northbound right now in the Honda Barely Fit. Because while all of today's server stuff and equipment and accessories definitely fit in the fit, we acquired some awesome media shelves that were cast off from a nonprofit organization, and they didn't quite fit in the fit by about two inches. So, with the back hatch open and shelving in here, we drove up a what? What's the grade of the hill? Like 12, 12 degrees? It, if you're in Tacoma, it's the hill. I, you know. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the hill on which hilltop is named yes so uh yeah i got to sam got to drive and i got to you know like hold shelves like that as we were driving up a hill and i think it was... it's the first time i kind of wish i still had my pickup since i got it since i got this but uh uh it's been what six or seven months or five months or i don't know 12 years how long have i had this thing now <laughs> five months okay um and, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I, I kind of like it. It's nice to be in a, in a car with a fun transmission instead of a boring transmission. So, thanks for coming along with us on the ride in the Honda Barely Fit. Uh, an external drive, much like...
past one. Ah. So this is a old four terabyte drive. So I, I have a I have to store a lot of audio and video at home. And uh, you can't get good server grade drives unless you buy external ones like this one. So I buy a bunch of them. I pop them open, I take the drives out, put them in my computer, and I put the old ones in here. So this is just, this is literally just for things like this, temporary storage. <sighs> okay. All right, fourth time's a charm. 400. Now this is all textual. This is, uh, what it's doing is it's copying the entire operating system to, to RAM so that it runs faster. This is one of those one-use utility, like, it's a disk cloner. I mean, there's nothing special about it. Is there any content on the PC? Is there any radio content there? Well, I saw Zara Radio and stuff like that. I, I mean, I presume this is where all the content was okay. coming from. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, there, there's Zara uh, Radio in, in there. So. Okay. All right. Any time estimation? Uh, it's going to be a while. All right. We got to we got to shut the radio station down now. Okay. Uh, I've got the ASDEC up open right here. Oh, okay. We just need to if you want to log into it. Sure. Look at this web page. Look at it. <laughs> it looks like it was made when I was your age. That's that digital alert systems box that we're talking about. Power enough? Not yet. It says server down. Oh. Now it looks like it's off. Well, it's still lit, so no. Oh, it's off. All right, now we gotta turn off the transmitter. our box so far. So what I'm doing is I'm taking an image, uh, a picture of like all of the data on that computer. I'm pulling it off and then I'm going to create a virtual server inside that machine. Okay. That's just going to be a copy of this. And for now, it's still going to be Zara Radio, uh -huh. but it's going to be running on top of my system. Okay. And then when we have something we like better that we can replace it with. Yeah. We just replace it, and it's not a big deal. But so, we replace it all virtual, like all remotely. Yeah, it require at that point it will require no hardware changes. Well, okay. But the reason why you're doing this is since it's going to be like a virtual machine, that means you need all the information from it to like plant it in the server. Right. Ah, okay. Yeah. I see now. Okay. Yeah. This this leaves today. Okay. So yeah, and then you can do with this as you need. Okay. Um, but let's uh. All right, let's turn everything off. All right, give us an update, Sam. Uh, everything's all torn apart and the world is chaos. <laughs> but the RAID card was old enough that it didn't know how SSDs work. So it would complain that the hard drive wasn't recording a proper rotational speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> There's a problem if the uh, SSD is rotating. So, and there was a RAID card here, and I ripped it out. Uh, it's four cores with hyper threading, so it shows up as eight. It's got 16 gig of um, DDR3 ECC. Uh, ECC in this case, I forget what it stands for. It's like error correction corn chips. I don't know. Um, but uh, what it does is it's aware, uh, it has extra circuitry in it, and the RAM will tell you if it's going bad and stop using the bad bits. So it's a little bit of extra security there. That's all I really did. It's got two power supplies. Everything is kind of designed to be hot swap. Like if I had been using the RAID system, 
it's got these drive caddies that you could drop drive in and you could actually put drives and take it drives in and out while it's on. Uh, we're not using that, uh, but you'll encounter that. Um, also, uh, it helps if you put the thing back in, right? Just, you know, helpful. Okay. Uh, it's got two power supplies. Some data centers I've been to have two entirely separate power grids, so if one fails, they've got a backup. More often, uh, what it's for is if one of the power supplies dies, you still have a functioning server until you can get in, and just like everything else, you don't even have to power it down to remove the power supply. Well, that's like a kidney. Yeah, <laughs> like a kidney. Um, so that's server. All right, so we discovered something. So they put some threaded rod here, and then they used the top of an old stereo or something as a shelf rack. That's, that's clever. I, I mean. Is that what I tell you? It, building stuff out of garbage. Uh, <laughs> extremely rickety and can I get off now, please. But uh, I like it. I'm remembering this. this it's is, a little. Uh, whoever did this was thinking. I like it. All right. So where'd y'all decide to put it? Right there. You can turn, this is not going in the YouTube video. <laughs> Alright, we're kind of, what's the next thing? I have to put the EAS box and the transmitter box behind the firewall. That's going to be fun. Okay. Okay, we're at about quarter to four. We're doing good. Okay. You don't need this anymore, right? Don't need anything more, okay. yeah. I am still intensely curious about that nasty pink stuff on the side of the metal behind you. Uh, I just need to get the transmitter and the EAS box behind the firewall. Then I need to do an audio test, turn the transmitter on, do an end-to-end -end test, make sure things sound good, and then we can pack up and go. Although we'll probably start packing up before then. Cool. There we go. The two radios we listen to here are 88.5 and what? 88.5 is the same ones we do. 710 Cairo or 710 whatever? 710 and 88.5. Okay, after that, let's All right. do EAS. Verify that the transmitter works and it's uh, back up? We verify that we have an audio path to the transmitter. On this tiny radio, I can't check levels yet. I'm going to have to do that before we go. Uh, once the EAS is on and I've checked levels, we're done. We're out of here. We can do everything else from somewhere else. How easy or difficult or how long will it take to maybe put uh, some radio shows that I have here? Uh, take too long? We can take care of that. Okay. Before leaving? The Zara computer doesn't exist yet. That's one of the things we're going to do remotely. Oh, gotcha. That's, okay. yeah. Okay, so. then don't worry. No, no, we'll... Let's do it. Oh. I'm just trying to think about how it fits. That's all. Gotcha. Uh, okay, if this reports a 10.140.0 uh, IP address, that means network was configured properly. I can yank all this stuff out. Yeah, yeah. 10.0.0.2. That's not what I need. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 0 0.181, all right. Uh, Why did it correct with the power cycle? Uh, I plugged it into the right ethernet port. That'll do it. It has two ethernet ports. I don't know what the other one is for because apparently it's not for IP configuration, but whatever. So this is kind of the new thing in our app new like last decade or so it's called software defined radio and the idea is it's just a big a to d and d to a converter just convert uh just converts bytes into waves just like a sound card but at much uh higher sample rates and then the, like the demodulation and stuff like that is all done in software like so here is a so this is my radio 
and here's the software that's driving it. So these are different radio stations. Metal is tested, but it's in those... And this is the one we're working on. You can tell it's close by because it's huge. Uh, but then I can zoom in. And it gives me a sense of what, what what it's looking like, how it's modulating and stuff like that. Now, you aren't bang on the uh, no, frequency. No, this is, this is a different frequency than this. Okay. This is the midpoint of this chunk of bandwidth that I'm listening to, and then I tune directly here. So the SDR is, is tuned to 106.827, but it's given me like a 20 megahertz slice of bandwidth, and then within that bandwidth, on the program here, I'm right. I'm bang on 106.5, and if I stop the transmitter, so it stops. It's frequency modulated to FM, so the the wave wiggles back and forth because the frequency plot is lower frequencies, higher frequencies. So the way it wiggles back and forth is how it modulates the sound. So if I stop it. You'll see the peak, there's no modulation, and the peak is right on 106.5. So we're bang on, we're good. I didn't know if this was calibrated, I don't know if the transmitter's calibrated, but I didn't do, they're not working together and they both say 106.500, that's usually a good sign. So, all right, I'm gonna fix, finish up with the EAS. Okay. So it's about six hours later. Uh, about 7.30 p.m. in uh, February 2021. I think it's... I don't know what date it is. Uh, Becky had to show you a clock to prove that I wasn't lying. Because uh, I am inherently untrustworthy as a human being. But everything seemed to go pretty well. Uh, we got um, all the equipment out. I did some rearranging of, of the wiring rack such as it is um, and uh, all the equipment went in and uh, sounded pretty good uh, you may have come on the video you're gonna see but um, I didn't need to buy him a sound card because the one they got because uh, he bought one that is the one I need um, the one I like the one I suggest uh, which I usually have to special order, so that ended up being nice. It made the configuration of the radio station way easier because the uh, that USB interface is a lot less finicky. However, I, the audio was a little quiet. Now I admit the transmitter is one is a, one of the you know newfangled digital transmitters, uh, which are nice, but it's one I'm unfamiliar with and it's really unfamiliar with the UI. Um, so it might be possible to crank, uh, crank up the gain or maybe turn on some sort of AGC, uh, to get the audio we need. But if that doesn't work, I'm going to need to come back in next week with a preamp and also, uh, a replacement receiver for one of the EAS receivers because it's marginal, um, to say the least. So that was, uh... That's how it went from my end. I think it was all all pretty good. And I guess I can say this now that it's done. But um, the engineers that I'm working or you know, the other engineers that I'm working with have agreed to learn uh, to learn uh, Linux and learn the system. So it's not just me who knows how to fix it. Uh, and I was happy to present them with their own laptops running Arch. And that was that certainly made my day. So how about you, Becky? How was it for you? That was pretty good. You can point at yourself if you want. I'm not certain how well any of this will come out since on this little screen, the viewfinder thing, super dark. But it's thematic, Betty. It, it is. But it was real nice, fun, um, and uh, my knees hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my back is toast. Uh, Not a lot of room for maneuvering anything back there. Plus, kind of cold. Yeah. But I think I'm going to go home. Uh, 
Oh, we're gonna go back to the office, unload the barely fit. Uh, uh, get some, uh, the next steps started, because this is a multi-step process. And, uh, I think I'm gonna have a small birthday celebration, perhaps. That sounds good. Alright. That day was a lot of work, but it was a lot of work doing something I really enjoy, and that makes it wonderful. And I'd like to thank my patrons, especially this time, because not only do you help me keep the lights on, but you actually helped out this radio station get back on the air, which uh, I thank you very much for. If you'd like to be a patron, you can join my Patreon. There is a link in the description of this page. Uh, if you're, if you join my Patreon, you get occasional extra videos, and you get to see these videos a little bit early. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I do have a soldering video coming up, as promised in this episode, and I'll see you then.